Hi, I'm Ron Brown. Welcome to my shop. Today, I'd like to talk to bowl turners. If you turn bowls using a four jaw chuck, you do it with a tenon. And the last step in, in finishing your bowl is to remove the tenon. And frankly, this is where most of the time when you blow the bowl up, you do it trying to remove this tenon because there isn't a really good, convenient way to hold your bowl so that you can work on the bottom. Until now, that is. And we call this the Ron Brown's Best Longworth Chuck. For example, here's a chuck, here's a bowl. <clears throat> Wouldn't it be wonderful if this thing would automatically self-center? Well, it does. As you can see, self-centers with a simple twist of the wrist. When I'm out on the show circuit and people ask me how it does that, I tell them it's magic. Well, it's not really magic. We have two discs with arcs which cross each other and where they intersect, that makes everything move in and out all together so it stays centered. So what I'd like to show you now is how we use it. There is a long worth size to fit every leg. We have a 10 inch, a 12 inch, a 14, a 16, a 20, and a 24. The sizes stated indicate the lathe that they were made for. So that would tell you that a 16 inch chuck is just enough smaller so that it will clear the bedways uh, when it's in the full open position. The 12 inch will fit all 12 inch lathes. The 14 uh, will fit all 14 inch lathes. I made that specifically for the Jet 1442. The 10 fit all mini lathes as long as you have a four jaw chuck. And the 20 and the 24, same thing. All right, so our purpose now is the third and final step of finishing our bowl, and that is to make the bottom look presentable and to make this tenon either go away or to reshape it. For example, we want this to look like this. The way we do that is pretty simple. I set my vessel face up, usually right on the lathe, take the, the uh, long worth, hold it parallel to the ground, shake it so everything moves nice and freely, put my chuck right over the vessel, and then just at this point go finger tight. Then we want to reach down, stabilize the bolt, and spin the wing nuts finger tight. And you want to do this in a crisscross pattern, just like with, if you were tightening up a car wheel. And at this point, all we're trying to do is get this finger tight. By the way, this entire process shouldn't take more than about three minutes. So there we go, we're finger tight, now it's going to hold the vessel. You'll notice on the back that the mounting plate is designed to go right straight back in the chuck. What you don't have to do is change jaws. There is 
a type of chuck on the market where you actually pull the jaws out, screw four different jaws on here, and then try to figure out where to put the buttons. This one just goes right in the chuck like that. If you happen to have a four jaw chuck with dovetail jaws, there is a dovetail groove here that will seat everything uh, properly. If you have a one way or an apprentice or uh, something like that with the straight jaws, then it works on that uh, just as well. This is universally compatible with any four jaw chuck just using the standard number two jaws that they come with. So now that we have uh, our chuck assembly installed, we need to go back and do our final tight. We'll do that and what works best for me is the T-handled Allen wrench that comes with my chuck. So I'll just hold the wing nut with my left hand, use the Allen wrench and take three full turns or six half turns. So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's three full turns. Now it's important the sequence that we tighten these up. So we want to alternate just like we would on a car wheel. So we did this one, let's do the opposite. And in my case, works better if I just uh, just spin it to the top. Half, one, half, two, half, three. Then we'll go over here, opposite. Half, one, half, two, half, three. The one below that is here. Half, one, half, two, half, three. So I've done four of them. Now just move over one peg and do the same thing. Half, one, half, two, half, three. The one opposite that is here. And by the way, you can tell that this is just tapered and this one is bulged. Which brings me to why this technology works. Half, one, half, two, half, three. And this is our last one. Half one, half two, half three. If you have coal jaws or any of the other chucks that have the hard black rubber buttons with the steel liner, those are designed to grip differently than these are. These we get finger tight and then as they mushroom out, when this expands, it expands against the bottom and that squeezes it. You squeeze this from eight different directions and you're on there pretty good. So that's really what does the holding. Okay, there's one other thing that's critically important here because of the technology. I designed this chuck to be kind and gentle to the bowl. I was sick to death of turning a bowl and then having the chuck eat it up where I ended up having a whole lot of hand finishing work to do because my chuck inflicted damage to the bowl. So what we did is make our buttons soft so they're kind and gentle to the bowl. What that does is it allows some vibration and some chatter when you're working up high if you don't use the tailstock. So I want everybody to bring the tailstock up, put a little pressure in here, that kills all the vibration, uh, it traps the vessel so it can't come out, you're not going to have it fly across the room and break into a lot of pieces. Bring your, uh, your tool rest over here and work down as far as possible. You can get all the way down to that last little nub in the middle. When you've done that, take the tailstock away and just work on this. And that way, you'll be able to finish the bowl bottom. You can sand it, you can apply the finish, you can shape it however you want to shape it without losing the vessel because it comes off the lathe and breaks. Your long width chuck is versatile. Here we show it in a compression grip, just like you grip the inside of the jaws. But what if you have a vessel where the sides slope in? You can't grip that on the outside. So what do you do? You would do the same thing with this chuck that you would do with your regular four jaw, and that is you use it in expansion mode. Just open it up like so, grip your little cap on the inside and work on the, the wing nuts out here and they will expand, the buttons will expand and mushroom out inside 
just like they did on the outside. Let's talk about minimum and maximum capacity. On the first four sizes, 10, 12, 14, and 16, they all have a two and a quarter inch mounting plate. The maximum capacity is the stated size minus an inch for each button or minus two inches. So I'm showing you a 10 inch truck here, we can grip an eight inch vessel. On a 16 inch truck, we can grip a 14 inch vessel. The minimums, however, are all about the same. And the governing factor is whenever the bolts run into the truck body, so I will estimate and tell you that's going to be around four and a half inches, but it really depends on the chuck. If you have the extended jaws, you can go a little smaller. But when we put our chuck, when we mount everything in here like this, as you close the chuck down, eventually the bolts are going to run to the chuck body and that's going to establish the minimum. For those of you with the larger lathes, the Powermatics and the Robust and uh, the big one-ways and that sort of stuff, we actually do have two in the larger size. This is a 20 inch and we make a 24. There are two significant, well really three significant differences. One is the weight. This chuck is twice as heavy as a 16. We have eight buttons. You have the option, and these are included, of adding an additional eight buttons in these extra slots. So anything from about 11 and a half inches up to the uh, maximum capacity, if you wanted to, if you really wanted a secure hold, a, a more secure hold, you can add uh, eight extra buttons. And they're included with your truck, by the way. The other major difference is the size of the mounting disc. When you have this much mass spinning around with an equally large vessel, you want to hold it very securely. So this mounting disc is four and a quarter inches. So you're going to need some larger jaws, and I would really, really, really encourage you to use a chuck with dovetail jaws. There is a groove in the mounting plate that the dovetail jaw will reach down in and grip very, very securely. You don't have to worry about this coming out of your lathe. By the way, the maximum recommended RPM on all the chucks is 600. And once you get this mounted in the lathe, 600 is plenty fast enough. So let me show you how these jaw sets would work. This happens to be a Vicmark 120 with the number three set of jaws. And your dovetail jaws would just go right there and clamp right down into the groove. So that's going to hold it very securely. This is the new Easywood chuck with the uh, large number three jaws and they're also dovetailed so they will go right down in grip that ring right there and give you the secure hold that you need. Now you can buy jaws from just about any of the larger truck body manufacturers. One way calls their dovetail set smooth jaws, but uh, Vicmark, uh, Easy Wood Tools, they're all available. And for the big 20 and 24, I really strongly encourage you to use a dovetail set of jaws. Over the years, I've had customers come up to me and ask me how they deal with vessels with a really sharp edge, especially on platters and stuff where you have kind of a knife edge. And the issue that they're having is under each button is a little steel washer and the knife edge, instead of contacting the rubber bumper, the soft rubber bumper, it'll try to dive down there and get that steel uh, washer which would then damage the edge. So the solution I came up with, which works really well, is something called riser rings. Riser rings stay in place when the chuck is running and they won't come off like any kind of shim you put in there. And they're very quick and they're very easy. Riser rings are just simple plastic rings which slide right over the buttons. 
And what that does is it raises your vessel up off of the face and everything works just like it should and it solves that issue. Also we use the riser rings uh, sometimes if you have uh, a vessel that has warped a little bit and it's only making contact in a couple of points we'll use the riser rings uh, opposing where, where the low spots are and that will stabilize the vessel so you can return something if you rough turn it. The most important thing that I would have you take away from our little time together here is that the technology behind this chuck and the way that it works is very different than what you're used to. So if you will consistently bring the tail stock up when you're cutting up high on the vessel, then you'll have maximum success and you will love this chuck. My name is Ron Brown. Thanks for watching.